Um, thank you all for joining. We are uh, very excited with our release, of course, and uh, yeah, everything that, that is coming. Um, this video will be put online later, so you can you know take your time and, and watch it again. Of course, we have a lot more information in our announcement blog that we already also put live. Um, but for now, we first want to answer questions. Now, to do that, we have well, Frank, uh, founder, CEO, here in on, on the other side to, to, to that side. Um, <laughs> and me, I'm Jos. Um, and if you probably know me, uh, I do marketing at Nextcloud. And um, yeah, there's a whole bunch of questions. The first is uh, somebody already asked, can I up cloud, upgrade my Nextcloud Pi to the new version? So that's diving right in. Can I get it? Why can I get it? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, of course. I mean, um, uh, as mentioned in the video, um, we are not a big fan of pre announcements. So everything we showed you in the video earlier is available today. So you can go to our website and download everything. Um, sometimes we do special packages for special platforms, for example, the, um, for the Raspberry Pi that was mentioned here. This will come over time. Um, so this is not done um, like today, um, but I, I'm quite sure it will be in just, um, I don't know, a few days. Um, but yeah. All right, thank you. Okay, uh, there's a question. Are read-only conversations coming in Nextcloud Talk? And I was trying to think, as I think it's already possible to block guests from speaking or something, but I'm not entirely sure what read-only conversations exactly means. Do you? Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure. So we have a feature where the moderator can mute everybody and then people can raise their hands and then you can enable the microphone. This is very useful if you have a call with a lot of people, if you're like maybe in school, university, or a big conference or something, you don't want everybody to speak at the same time. So you can do that for audio um, control. I don't think we have this for chat. So if read only means that people can't chat, um, then we don't have this yet. But it's actually a very good idea. I have uh, already thought about that, but it's something that should be relatively easy to add. But we have it for audio. Control. All right. Uh, somebody asks when is the release? No. Well, <laughs> half an hour ago. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. So it's, I uh... mean, uh, just I mean, maybe give us a few minutes to update website, download service, and everything. But no, this is all like now. Um, so as I mentioned before, I'm quite proud. Um, that the next cloud, uh, we don't really do pre announcements. So, everything we showed you today is available today as 100% open source. Yeah. yeah. Somebody pointed out that Next Cloud Pi is still on uh, 1902. I guess that's. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, of course, uh, these projects um, are done by volunteers in the community. And of course, they often have specific needs. Like I, I remember with the snap often that they um, put a couple of the folders of Nextcloud in special places. And then, you know, that's not a standard thing in Nextcloud. So sometimes that breaks and it takes them some time to update to the new version. So I'm guess I'm, I'm pretty sure it's the same for Nextcloud Pi. Uh, these these projects that just take a little time to, to catch up. Um, of course, you can always update manually but yeah, in the end, it'll come to you, I would say. Um, yeah, somebody asks, tell me about workflow file, but that's a little too vague a question for me to know what to answer. <laughs> workflow file, um, also not exactly sure what it means. I mean, we have our workflow engine called Nextcloud Flow. Um, it can uh, you can create like rules and you can do this as an admin for everybody or you as an individual user and it basically means that you can listen to certain events so if a certain type of file is uploaded in a certain folder by a specific user which is in a special elder group with a special size mime type and so on basically we have these triggers and then based on the trigger you can execute uh, actions like sending a notification, push notification, mail, curl, uh, call an external script to do some integration into some other software, um, convert the file to a PDF, and so on. There are a bunch of those actions in the in on, on our app store, appsnextcloud.com. You can have a look, and they are also quite easy to implement those actions. 
Um, so um, yeah, every time you want to um, react on a certain file change or a new file or some other event and then execute an action, that's something you can do. Um, also, the cool thing is that these actions are um, executed in the background. So they're executed in an asynchronous way in the background. So it actually doesn't slow down uh, Maxcloud. Um, I think that's quite quite important. Some of those workflow engines out there basically mean that a lot of code is executed every time the user does something and that is leads to a slow system. In this case, it's all um, asynchronous in the background. Yeah. Yeah, I think Flow, uh, Flow is a really cool uh, feature for us. There's a lot more we can do there, I'm sure. So we got quite a few questions now, so we're going <laughs> to be here for a while. I hope you have no big plans. I hope you have no other plans. So, All yeah. right, so somebody asked, what about single sign-on Active Directory for Microsoft and LDAP Sync? Um, I mm. think we have this right yeah like we, LDAP uh, and... should, those should work yeah um so we have um, um a way to synchronize with LDAP servers there are actually a, just a lot of things you can do with with LDAP um we we synchronize and cache information for performance reasons because sometimes if an LDAP server or an active directory server is slow then in the past it also load down the next cloud server, uh, which is bad. So at the moment, or the newer versions, we cache a lot of information. So this is all, um, yeah, it's already working. I don't know if this is meant with LDAP sync. I guess so. Um, but and also um, we integrate into um, some of the more advanced authentication systems from like Microsoft uh, um, uh, ADFS stuff, for example, um, for single sign-in. Um, I don't know if this was the question, but yeah, that's already working. It should cover, I think, yeah, almost everything. <laughs> yeah. So somebody asked about the authoring color for the text editor. It would be interesting to understand how that's done in the markdown format. <laughs> yeah, uh, the answer is not at all, unfortunately. So this is one of the limitations. And we actually had a lot of internal like brainstorming how to do this feature properly. I can give you a little bit, I don't know if people are interested, a little bit of insights. Because um, yeah, on one hand, we are really super happy that we support like Markdown as it, it's, I think it's a nice file format. It's compatible um, on every platform with a lot of apps and it's an open standard, it's very easy to read. And it's, we really like Markdown, it's a nice format, of course. Um, there is no, there is no way to store this kind of editing information in the markdown file format. Um, so we were thinking about um, ways to do that. So we were thinking about introducing, extending the standard with something like that. But this would basically kill readability because if you then in the middle have like some kind of like in a diff file, right? Where in the middle you have like a section say, okay, this person says that, this person says that, it makes it quite unreadable. We were thinking maybe we can code the information like in the bottom of a file, like in a JSON structure, in a like binary, not readable format. But it look, would, like, would look like quite ugly. So we also did want to do that. So um, what we're doing at the moment, we are storing this editing information on the server independently from the file. And if you are um, working with the file, the next lot text and sharing it and collaborating with it, syncing with it, all the all the editing information stays there, but if the server, uh, the, if the file leaves the server and you change it locally and then you upload it to the server, then the editing information is gone. The colors are basically gone. Um, that's how it is. But we thought that this is the best um, the best compromise. Um, introducing a feature which is not supported in the open standard. Yeah, I. Yeah, it's always finding a middle ground there, right? There are a lot of other features in Markdown that would be nice to have. But yeah, it's sometimes difficult to find the right way of doing it in Markdown without making it unreadable. Of course, these colors that would just not look good, uh, I think. I mean, the whole idea of Markdown is that it's readable both as a human and as a machine. And that's, yeah. Yeah, that means certain things are just not feasible. Yeah. So, um, 
Yeah, somebody asked, what is your high performance backend? I don't really understand. So, um, yeah. yeah. So basically, the I think Jos did a really good job in the video trying to explain it. But at the end of the day, we only wanted to spend like a few minutes um, in the video and also didn't want to bore the people who are not deep in the technology with that. So I would recommend that everybody um, has a look at our independent blog post that we publish on our website, where we just have a lot more technical detail how this actually works. Um, the summary from my side is basically that um, we use just a lot of different technologies in Nextcloud for the different, um, yeah, for the different use cases. Obviously, we use like all content technologies like JavaScript and UJS and, and iOS with um, Objective-C and Android, with um, Java and Kotlin and so on. And in the back end, we also use a bunch of different technologies. We, there's a lot of um, PHP code that we use for the collaboration features because PHP is like a high-level scripting language. So it's quite fast and easy to develop powerful features as you can see in the release. But there are also some things uh, where we use um, Go, for example, because Go in our talk high-performance backend, um, it's very fast language for handling lots of connections, but it's a bit more low level. Um, and then in this case, we use uh, Rust. Um, and we also have other components. There is something which is SIPRIDGE has written in C and C++ and just a bunch of different technologies. And we have the strategy that we use the right technology for the right job. Um, in this case, um, so in this case, um, um, it's Kotlin. Um, um, that we use for uh, for this extension, and um, the strategy here is that uh, we use this as an optional component together with the PHP code. So one of the goals of Nextcloud always was that it should be really super easy to start. Um, like the earlier question was on Raspberry Pi, right? You can run the Raspberry Pi with just minimal configuration. That's super easy, uh, super important for us. But often, um, if you scale to lots of users, um, in the case that Dr. Hildmann presented in the video, for example, where they have a lot of users, um, then of course you can add all those components and get more speed and scalability. Um, but yeah, then you have to install more components. That's basically the strategy. In this case, the high performance backend for files is an optional component. If you just have like 10, 20, 30, 50 users and a small instance, you don't care, it's fine. But if you have more, then you can install it additionally. But again, as I said, more in the blog post. Yeah, I want to apologize for the typing. My keyboard is indeed mechanical and bloody loud. Sorry for that. I will, uh, well, try and mute while I type. So I'm trying to reorganize the questions a little bit because we got quite a few questions related to the performance. And I thought we should try and, and go over those um, together. Um, so somebody asked, uh, I have a small next cloud for only two users. Will there be a noticeable performance boost for this kind of installation? I think that's a good question. Um, probably not, probably not, especially not if you, um, um, uh, if you have, um, the desktop client, the desktop client really benefits from these changes. And also, if you use the web interface heavily with a lot of tabs open and they're all like communicate with the backend constantly, then you also get um, some performance improvement. Um, but I think in a small installation, it's probably not a huge difference. But you can try and experiment. But I want to point out that this backend has also um, a usability improvement, not only the performance, because you get notifications um, instantly. So every and time that you will um, notice. Yes, that's what you will notice. So every time someone mentions you in a chat, shares a file with you, um, you get a notification from your admin or you get a calendar um, appointments coming up, all those things, you get it like immediately now um, instead of um, per average 15 seconds later. I mean, for most people, 15 seconds is not a big deal, but it, this has this benefit of having instant push notifications on all clients. Yeah, exactly. I think that that makes it still worthwhile for a private user because these instant notifications, especially if you use an excellent talk, for example, this is super useful. 
Um, so that's yeah, that's really helpful. I will personally do that, even though it's a bit of work with reverse proxy and all that fun stuff. That's just how it is. So um, somebody asked, will there be a technical blog post with more details about the performance improvement in XL21? The answer is yes, it's already out. You can go and read it. So yay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So there's um, yeah, our, our technical team um, together with yours and other people did a great job with trying to summarize that. Of course, it's possible that there's still details missing. <laughs> in this case, I would encourage everybody to um, um, start a thread in our forum um, to discuss this further. Or, of course, in the, in the GitHub um, repository, if you're really a developer, technical person, then this is also the place where you can talk directly about specific code directly with the engineers. Yeah. We got asked if Nexo 21 is compatible with PHP 8, and that's a quick one. Yes, it is. Um, yes, yes, it is. We did a lot of work and testing, um, and it is compatible, yes. And gives you a nice performance boost, right? Because especially yeah. for larger servers, PHP 8 deals very well with a lot of more concurrent requests, exactly. which is, of course, yeah. what Nextcloud uh, is good at. So. Additionally, to the, all the performance improvements in our code that we did, that you also showed in the video, and additionally to the performance improvements you get with this high-performance backend, you also get busy all the PHP improvements um, just, just yeah. for free, basically, to upgrade. Yeah. Triple win, I think. Um, is the Docker, uh, does the Docker build include the Rust backend? Um, I, I guess not yet, because it's out for 45 minutes, um, <laughs> but it should. I mean, it should. No. Um, that's why not. Right? I mean, and now the, the community who is maintaining our Docker images, like they are super active. I mean, yeah. they just have a look at um, what's going on in GitHub there. So I have no doubts that this is a matter of, I don't know, a few days. Yeah, exactly. I was actually excited um, because for the uh, for the announcement, we announced like um, shortly, a few hours before the release. Um, we did a blog post about a bunch of new team members, and I was also looking at some statistics for our announcement of how Nexla did in 2020. And I was very excited to see that we had 500 million pools already on Docker. So I was like, hmm, let's see what it was in our previous announcement. And that was 100 million. So, you know, it's pretty nice that we went from like, well, zero to 100 million in the first three ish, three and a half years of Nextcloud. And then in one year, we went from 100 million to 500 million. So it tells you how quick the use of the Docker container is growing. It's really popular. Yeah. So I look forward to see when we hit the 1 billion. So next question. Uh, it seems you work a lot with German companies. How large is your global effort? So... Um... I mean, two things. First of all, Nextcloud is a real international community um, with a lot of users and contributors from all over the world. So if you just look at um, people in the forum or active on GitHub or in social media or blogging in the press, then you can really see that we have like users everywhere, really from like, I don't know, the tiniest town somewhere in Africa to, I don't know, every big, big city um, all over the world. Mm, but this is just our open source community, right? This is just, don't have any statistics, it's just people use our software. Um, of course, then as a company, we are also working together with organizations to help them to scale the next cloud instance and to make it secure and nicely configured and so on. And as a company, we also have um, like customers from all over the world. Um, um, probably the biggest country is like still Germany. This has something to do of, because of the roots of Nextcloud. But really, like the rest of Nextcloud, uh, the rest of Europe, there is a lot of Nextcloud there, and other continents too. It's really all over the world. Um, and um, yeah, this is growing nicely. Um, we also published an another blog post today, so a lot to read, um, where we talk a little bit about uh, the company momentum. So um, in 2019, we already um, doubled our order intake. In 2020, we did the same. Um, so um, 
yeah, everything we do is really growing, growing nicely. And I'm really happy that um, of this support contracts um, that we sell to these customers, we can also then hire more developers to make our next software better. So yeah, I think everybody wins here. Yeah, I was quite happy to put uh, this blog live this morning with, uh, I think, 13 new people who joined us in the last three months. Um, yeah, it's uh, growing quickly this way. So the next question, uh, let me see. Um, is there a plan to improve the document community server? There are some bugs. So this is about the only office document server. Uh, which is definitely less maintained than the Collabora online uh, yeah. one. Yeah, yeah. So we um, we are working on that, um, trying to um, fix the bugs there. Um, to be totally honest, we are a little bit restricted um, um, from our partners on the office because they're not putting every improvement out as open source. Um, some of the improvements they only share with their paying customers, so. That's a bit of a restriction we have there. There's nothing we can do, unfortunately, but we are actively working on that. Um, if you have like um, significant problems, bugs there, would also encourage you to um, try Collabra Online, which is an alternative. It should have similar functionality and it's maybe a little bit more actively maintained. But um, yeah, of course we are trying to improve everything so we got a question about the virtual drive uh what is the status of this um yeah 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 so um this is um this is functionality a feature that um to be totally honest took us quite some time to develop um it was like in the in the planning for quite some time but um, I'm really happy that in the last few months we really put a lot of effort into that to launch that and make it really nice and good. And there's a pre-release available, actually. I'm not really sure if it's called beta or if not, then just ta uh, use the daily builds. That yeah, the daily builds the at the moment, yeah. Yeah, so the daily builds has this functionality built in. Um, I um, um, it would encourage everybody who is interested in that to try it. And uh, um, and the final um, the final is scheduled to be out in just really few weeks, so really really close. But um, a really close to final version is already in the in the, the daily or the nightly builds. So just yeah. have a look. I had a question about the whiteboard. Can I insert pictures into the whiteboard? And the answer is yes, you can. Yes. Yeah, I believe there's video support as well, but I think both for pictures and video, you need to install some libraries on your server or some tools, um, yeah. like Image Magic and FFmpeg. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, if you have them, then it'll work. If not, then Correct. you get a warning. Yeah, but inserting a uh, like inserting a picture, for example, is a um, very popular feature. So um, you can just post a picture, some document, some drawing, something, and then you can collaborate around that. You can like mark pieces of it or do arrows or write text to it, mark it, um, do some markup around it actually. It's also a feature that is like often requested by schools and universities who use, um, use this for uh, remote uh, learning. Um, so um, yeah. I expect that this will be a very popular feature. Yeah, absolutely. I think the whiteboard is really cool. It's, um, I mean, a lot of people, of course, keep notes with Nexo text. I think I have a text file open with every call I have pretty much. But um, yeah, sometimes you need a bit more free form. And the presentation mode is, of course, really cool because you can zoom in and out. And then if you have presentation mode on, then all participants will see the same thing as you see. So you kind of guide everyone uh, uh, around the whiteboard. So that's uh, that's really nice. Mm -hmm. um, so a question about a few questions we have about Nextcloud Talk. Um, one is: Does Nextcloud Talk work work between different servers? So um, again, it's a bit complicated um, because it depends what's meant with that. 
So first of all, uh, in Xcloud Talk, um, you can of course have a share link and send it to someone. And by clicking on the link, the person can be part of the chat conversation and the audio and video call. And um, the, ser uh, the, the person doesn't need to have an account on the specific server. The person can have a different server. So this already works today. Um, but I guess what's meant there is like pool um, federation, where you have like, you're basically using um, your server and another person using a different server. And you have a shared chat conversation and audio video call between people and different servers without clicking on any external links. Um, so this is basically the full federation support. And this is actually actively developed on at the moment. And um, yeah, again, as I said earlier, we don't want to do any pre-announcements. We don't want to create repo there. We only share and talk about things that are done. But I'm happy to say that we are working on exactly that and it should come back soon. Cool. Uh, I just heard that people hear me type even when I'm muted, which is, uh, I'm sorry, streaming software. It's all new for me. I'm sure I can figure out a way to prevent that going forward, but I'll just try not to type too much. So a bunch more questions about talk. One of them is, uh, will you implement Nextcloud talk notifications for the desktop, Mac, Windows, and Linux? And I think that that is actually now done with yes. the Rust backend, right? Then yes. you get, yeah. Yeah. I, to be honest, it, it should work already with the yeah. old version, True. but only with the delay. Yeah, um, exactly. Because in the old version, we didn't have like real push notifications to all clients. Um, so. Of course, it was a bit unfortunate because I don't know, getting a notification that you're running out of quota or mention a chat message. If the, you get a notification 15 seconds too late, it's probably not a big deal. <laughs> but if someone calls you yeah. um, and you get like a call notification only like 15 seconds later, then that's, that's obviously a problem because other person yeah. might have given up already. And this is something that we also solve with the new backend. Yeah, because okay. you get a nice pop-up on your desktop when someone calls you uh, immediately or what, uh, half a second later. Yeah. And then the web interface works too. So in the web interface, yeah. you now also get a real-time notification that somebody starts a call with you and that used to not be the case. So that's, um, yeah, that's really helpful, I think. Exactly. Um, now, the next question says, in the past, uh, talk calls all participants in the mobile apps when I start a video call. Can I switch this off now? Um, um, yes. Um, there are, I mean, I think we all agree that we want to have like a real call notification if there's a one-on-one -on -one call coming in, like a real phone, right? For um, group conversations, this is a this is a feature that is debatable. Some people prefer it on, some people prefer it off. It was off in the past. We switched it to default on. We might we might do a config option for that. I mean, I I'm personally not a big fan of too many buttons and config options, but this seems to be a clear case from my perspective, which uh, people have different. Um, preferences yeah so we'll probably do a config option for that for crew what calls and can you configure this in the sidebar settings at the moment i think you can configure that for um for chat messages yeah if you want to get a notification um a notification for every new message or if you're mentioned in the channel um, or not at all that you can configure. I'm not sure you can configure that for VoIP uh, push notifications on the phone. Yeah, no, I don't but think so. Probably needed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, is there a breakout room functionality coming to talk? I think we kind of yes. have that with just direct yeah, conversations, yeah. right? You can, yes, you can, if you in a conversation and you go to the participants list and see all the other top pictures, you can click on a person and say, start a call. And then you have a new window with a separate breakout conversation. We sort of have that, but, but the real feature, as you might know it from, I don't know, Microsoft, and Google and others, 
Um, that's something that's also coming. Yes, we don't have it yet. Uh, you can conveniently say, hey, create a um, breakout conversation. You mark like 10 people and then basically in one, with one click, moved in into a parallel room. Um, that's something we want to do um, yeah. later, later this year. In talk, can the video or chat be detached? I don't get it detached from. Ah, uh, so so in in the browser, um, it, with YouTube, for example, depending on the browser, also you can like pop out the video that it's in a separate oh, yeah. window. Yeah, um, I mean, I think it's browser dependent. I think it works in Firefox. So Firefox has a dedicated feature for that, and that's actually oh. working. Where you can start a call, and then you get like this button, click on it, and then you detach it and have the call in parallel to, to some other stuff that's working. Um, and you can also have a call in your sidebar while you are doing other stuff in Nextcloud, for example, editing, I don't know, a Word file collaboratively, and then have the call in the sidebar and a chat in the sidebar. I don't know if this counts as the chat videos, um, <laughs> not in a generic way, more in the context. Um, yeah. but yeah, I mean, if you have any concrete ideas, how, what you expect there, um, maybe just open a ticket in the talk repository to describe the feature, how it exactly should work. Um, but I mean, talk is something, the talk project we started, um, as something that should be in addition to the rest of the collaboration features. So if there is a way to. I don't know, do things and have a call and chat and everything in parallel. I find it super interesting. So just open a ticket and describe how this should work. This would be super helpful. Yeah. So next question, also not entirely sure what the user is missing. Um, so when talk can use multiple sessions from one user, even only in chat. So I, I know right now you can have like multiple, you can be in multiple chat rooms at the same time, just in tabs. But I do also know that one user cannot be in the same chat room from like their mobile phone and the tablet and their browser. So that's probably what the user here means. Yeah, that's um, exactly as you said. Um, you can have um, different browsers, different tabs, your phone, your tablet, um, basically working in parallel in, in, in Excellent Talk, have different conversations on different devices at the same time. What you can't have at the moment is that you are like in a chat conversation or a video call on your phone and your tablet and your desktop at the same time, basically in the same conversation on different devices. That's what meant here with the session support, I guess. Um, I know that the team is uh, looking into ways to do that. It is a bit tricky because then you also have to stream the video like for the same user to different devices and so on. It's a bit tricky, but um, yeah, that's something people like. To be totally honest, originally I thought that no one will need that, <laughs> but it seems that people really, I don't know, have five different devices and 10 conversations and jumping around and yeah, it seems well, that you really want to have that. It, it, I don't know, I was today in a call with my team and I was using my tablet for the call. Um, and then, you know, Marie was like, oh, I pasted this in the chat and I mm -hmm. wanted to open the link on my desktop and I go there and then I have a choice between closing the video call on the tablet or viewing the link. So, yeah, that, that yeah, makes sense. Point. Okay, But it's it's not something you need all the time. You can't work without, but sometimes it is useful, I suppose. Yeah. True. On the other hand, it can also cause confusion because I sometimes have, like, if you have a chat open in a, in a tab somewhere, you don't really get notifications because, of course, it's already open. And then yeah. you might miss that somebody said something there. And, of course, yeah, right now, if I click there and then I get the warning, like, oh, but you have the session open, then I know I still had it open and I probably missed messages. And now you wouldn't get a warning anymore. So, yeah, yeah I don't know. For the people... For the people who have like 1000 tabs open in the browser and yet <laughs> and yet all every conversation open on some tabs somewhere exactly yeah then you might might miss notifications That's a bit mm -hmm. funny. yes so yeah there's that it's complicated as usual um 
All right, I think that covers mostly talk. Somebody suggests that we need a streaming app for Nextcloud 22, so we can do this next time in Nextcloud. <laughs> <laughs> it, the, yeah, I know, I know. I actually expected more questions about that. Why are we really using YouTube here for this announcement? And in a way, it is a bit weird um, because, um, yeah, next last we are promoting open source and free software and decentralization and hosting and peer service and so on. Yeah. Of course, Nextcloud is primarily a tool like for a smaller group to work together. I mean, small can also be millions of users work together, but not a global service. So Nextcloud is not a global streaming service. And we will most likely never become, I mean, not, I would say definitely not. not <laughs> Don't say mostly. never, but it's yeah, like. Yeah, no, no, no. We will not become a global video streaming service. That's no. just not the mission, sorry. Yeah. So we'll always use other software and platforms for that. And at the moment, yeah, even Google. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Uh, it's just being pragmatic, I think. Uh, we can't do everything. I know some people say, oh, but you build almost everything. But we actually try to focus on collaboration for teams, as you say. And this is um, important. Um, yeah. Somebody asked, are there any changes to the calendar app? Um, I, I, we have a long change log, to be honest. I mean, in our announcement, we only covered the big stuff. Um, but there is on our server, there is a full change log too, where it goes through all the changes. I assume there is also some stuff happening in calendar, but to be honest, I'm not completely sure at the moment. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure either. And, you know, I wrote it's, in as um, blog, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we usually cover like the big, the big improvements and the calendar is, um, yeah. It was not a big focus for this release, yeah. It was not a focus in the, no. for this release, exactly, yeah. So here's a question. Uh, the KBV, that's a German privacy related organization. I guess they said medical practices in Germany cannot use Office in the cloud anymore. Is there a solution from Nextcloud for this new guideline? Oh. Um, I don't know who asked this question because it's so it's so perfect because um i think um we actually uh, launched a solution for that a week ago i i don't know if it was just a coincidence or i don't know but we actually um started the project um together with uh, with harvard medical school um where you can um host your personal medical data share it with people like your doctor um, without giving him full control and without giving away well, any control to any cloud service or big corporations. Um, yeah, and, th and there's actually a solution for that. Um, if you go to apps.nextcloud.com, um, latest updates, they should be relatively high on the list. I don't have a link here at the moment, sorry, but yeah, it's Look at appsnextcloud.com. We have hundreds of those specialized apps, and there is definitely a new one for exactly that problem. Yeah, that's for private data. I think this question was aiming more for medical practice, like a doctor's office. Oh, doctor's but of course, office. for that, Nextcloud itself is the solution, right? I mean, as, yeah. as a doctor, you can run it, well, yeah. on premise under your control. Exactly. So, Nextcloud is. It's a general purpose collaboration tool, so a calendar, chat, video calling, file exchange, project management, all the, all the things that are available. And I, I assume most of those features are also usable for doctors. Um, but yeah. of course, we are not a specialized doctor's like office uh, management tool. They, I think they are specialized tools for that. But yeah. yeah, but we have just general purpose solutions similar. As Microsoft yeah. or Google. Yeah, exactly. But of course, if, if the rule is you can't use, put your docs on Google Docs, then install Nextcloud with Calabra and you can do the same things, but exactly. your data stays secure and compliant and, you know, safe, which yeah. is, of course, yeah, big advantage. Exactly. So, do you have plans to add OAuth to Scopes or OE DC? 
Um, I can answer a lot of questions for that. I have no clue. Um, <laughs> sorry for that. I know that we support OAuth too. Probably not this specific sub feature that was mentioned there. I, I can not say anything about that. I'm sorry. Do you know what it is, Jos? Yeah, if I recall, I mean, you have right now our support, I think, is that you can, like, of course, use your Nextcloud server to log in to one of those. I think for OAuth, there is also that Nextcloud can be an OAuth provider. I think there's an app for yeah, that yeah. as well. No, no, as I said, so it that works. covers, but, I mean, but I think this question was about some specific sub feature of OAuth. So scopes or OIDC open? Yeah. OIDC, I, I don't know it. Yeah, it, it might be. Oh, OIDC, Open ID Connect. Is this what? Ah, mean? yeah, I guess so. Oh yeah, that's yeah. also that's that's also fully supported as an Open ID Connect app. That's, there we are. That's, that's fully supported. Already done. That those are the best features that people can ask about. Yeah. So then there's a question: if there is any news about S3 storage for this version. Um, there is, yeah. Um, there's actually a lot of work went to it, uh, went into the S3 connector, and it um, became a lot faster. And I think I think even Jos covered that in the video, as far as I know. Actually, there are some situations where the S3 connector became like crazy fast um, because we uh, reduced the number of round trips between the storage and the next cloud application server. And this is something in bigger cluster situations can be um, has a huge impact. Um, if you just reduce the, the round trips there. I, I just, can you add something about the specific improvements? I think it was a really, really high number if, you, if configured correctly. Yeah, so there are, I think, uh, if I recall correctly, there were two improvements there. Uh, two bigger ones and some smaller things. So one of the bigger ones was that if you copy a file, um, it used to be that to, to copy a file, then you know it would be sent to the Nextcloud server and then put back on storage again. And now Nextcloud supports like the direct the, the APIs from S3 so that the copy happens on the server. And well, you know, that takes roughly equally long for a one kilobyte file compared to a one terabyte file, while obviously pumping a one terabyte file to the Nextcloud server and then back to the storage takes a long time. So you can put any number on that improvement a thousand times, sure, can be done if the file is big enough. So that, that makes a big difference, of course, in, in some specific use cases. Um, and the other improvement I think had to do with latency in, in some situations. Uh, we had one uh... customer where you had a really high latency, right? Yeah, you have, I think it is to check if uh, a bucket is uh, correctly uh, configured. Right, so, that one so too. Is, it's basically before every request, before the S3 storage was accessed, there were basically a check happening if this bucket exists and it's readable and everything. And um, yeah, it doesn't make sense to check this all the time. Um, so there's a switch now where you config, can configure that. Maybe it makes sense to have to check while configuration, but once this is all set up, you don't need to do the check whatever a thousand times a second. So if you switch this off, uh, off then you have um, reduced the latency in the performance. Yeah, yeah. Reduce uh, the latency and improve the performance. By the way. <laughs> reduce latency and performance. Yeah, but yeah. Exactly. I, I, yeah, that's also what I remember. Um, so there's not a next up talk question. Uh, can we have retention policies? And I'm guessing that's about the chat, of course. Um, so I think it depends on what the policy is. <laughs> I guess what is meant there which is something I hear from time to time is that a messages that are then older than a certain um, time are automatically deleted. Um, I think if you want that, you can probably do this with a super simple shell script. It's a cron job, to be honest, um, because you just check the, the comments table and just delete everything um, after a certain timestamp. 
Um, we don't have this in a nice fancy click interface at the moment. Um, something we probably can do. But if you not if you need that, you can just directly go in there and just do a with one with a one line SQL command and do that if you want. Um, saying that, there's also coming in the next version. Um, there's also um, a feature to delete messages. Um, basically, if you have a typo or something, you can delete a message and uh, set it again. That's also coming. Yeah. I got a few more questions. Um, it's getting a little messy here because I'm trying not to type. Um, <laughs> any improvements to Nexart photos, especially sorting and performance? Hmm. So there's work going on. Um, I think uh, we had no time to do a lot of improvements for this, this release. Um, but it is really high on the list. Um, I mean, I use it myself. I hear it from other people that if you really have a lot of files, really big files, um, then some operations can be slow. Um, that's something we want to improve in the in the future. Um, yeah. Yeah. But I, I encourage everybody to participate, like on GitHub in the repository. There, if you have any feedback or suggestions to that, it's. Um, but I agree, it is something that can be better. So, very important question. Until how long will Frank able to know every feature in Nextcloud? <laughs> <laughs> I think the, the times are long over. To be yeah, honest. exactly. No, 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 no. This is like this is this. Is, the times are long, long, long over. Um, I already remember. I could... Yeah, sorry. No, I'm happy to happy that I could more or less answer most of the questions here, but no, no, times are a lot over, we are long over. We have so many people now inside our team and outside the core team working on things. And uh, no, this is like, this is how it should be. It's a real big community project. Yeah, exactly. Yes, there's the wider community doing things as well. You know, suddenly you see like an iOS app for passwords pop up like happened last week. You know, exactly. it's like nobody knew it was coming and then bang, suddenly it's there. It is, yeah. there's so much happening. It is just impossible to keep track just, of everything. Yeah, writing a complete new iOS app to accessing um, passwords from an Xbox, that's, that's nothing you do in half an hour, right? So that's a big project. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, it yeah. just, and, it just, and it just happened, it just popped up by our super, super, super awesome community. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, these, these things, yeah, and, and even, I know some of the features, there's so much Xcloud can do in a corner, hidden here or there. Um, I find it interesting, like, um, you often, we get questions on Twitter, you know, like, can Xcloud do X or how do I do X? And very often it is possible. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, you mentioned file locking in today's presentation. This feature works well in the web interface. What about desktop client support? Yeah. That's actually something that uh, we discussed, and there are there's a GitHub issue about that how this should work. It is more complicated than people might think, um, <laughs> because file locking is usually a feature um, that you. Um, I mean, the worst case would be if a file is locked and you want to work with the file, but you can't because it's locked. That's something you want to avoid. And this is all no problem if the file is just locked because someone is editing at this moment um, on their phone or desktop or whatever. The thing is, our desktop client has the design goal to work completely offline. So the goal of the desktop client is that you can have a synchronization with your server and then you, I don't know, go into a plane, remember planes, like a long time ago. Um, yeah, the <laughs> good old days. Or, the good old days, yeah. Or trains um, in, in Germany without internet. Um, <laughs> um, and then you can work with your stuff and then once you have internet again, you think the change is back. And if you do, if you combine this with file locking, then um, you can easily come up with situations where a file is locked when it should be, and then a file is also not unlocked when it should be. So this is complicated. 
but there's a discussion around that how to support it properly. Yeah, I, I'm seeing the check. There's somebody who is asking how to validate a file from many users with workflow, user to user or group. But I'm I'm not sure. We just talked about workflow. I'm not. I'm still not clear what exactly the question is. I mean, yeah, what is validate 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 a project. file from many user? I think there's a bit of a language problem uh, happening here. Maybe might be automatic can, translation. Um, you can, um, if a file is changed, you can call an external script and do something, whatever this validation is. Or get a is, notification can, or get a message in the that. chat room. Yes, so this is and possible with workflow. Totally. And if validation means checking for a virus, for example, there is also feature for that. Antivirus app. So, yeah. yeah. So not completely clear what validation means, but yeah. there are a lot of things you can do. Somebody asked if the browser notification could be a little louder, like in Slack, because I sometimes hardly notice it. I don't know. Do we control that? Or is that just a browser feature? Louder. So the thing is, as far as I know, um, that for restrictions of modern browsers, we can actually not play a sound um, in the desktop uh, app. So. Okay, I'm only 90% sure, not 100%, but as far as I understand, the modern browsers basically can only play um, a sound directly as a result of an action, like a click of a user. But for yeah. notifications, what you want is you do something in, or you do nothing with the window and it just then suddenly plays a sound because notification is coming in. Yeah. As far as I understand that this is something that is restricted because yeah, well, otherwise browser windows would play stupid videos all the time in the background, right? You don't want that. But I yeah. think we can't do that. But um, yeah, we can do this with the desktop client. Um, True. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, so somebody asks about improvements in mail. Um, somebody also asking about long mail conversation, writing reply messages can be terrible if mail has improved. And we already had Christoph Wurst, um, one of the mail developers, reply in the chat that mail has many improvements planned. Uh, we already talked, uh, wrote a little bit about it in our announcement. And I think the release of the Next Mail app will be in the next days or weeks. So there's a yeah. lot of improvements coming, right? Yeah, the, um, the mail app is actually one of the focus areas at the moment. And um, if you just look at um, the improvement of the last few versions, you can see that there's there's a lot coming in functionality, in performance, in the user interface, everything. And um, and there's a new version, as, as Christoph pointed out, there's a new version of the mail app coming uh, very soon. Um, yeah, if you want to really see what's going on, have a look at our GitHub repository. There's also a changelog file. You can look there. Oh. But there's um, there's a lot coming. So the next one is a cool one. I'd love to program my own app for Nextcloud. Awesome. Um, but I have no idea where to start and how. Could you upload a basic tutorial on YouTube? Well, done, right? <laughs> yeah. So, I no, yeah, no, I think we had like, if you, for example, look at um, the conference videos from the Nextcloud conference from last year, um, we had like at least one talk um, recorded video, I think it was by Julius, uh, how to start, how to write yeah. your first uh, Nextcloud app. I think you're right, yes. No, that's true. Yeah, we did that. Yeah. All right. Um, uh, Matterbridge sounded so nice when you tried to set it up, but it's really, really clumsy and a lot of stuff is outdated. Do you have any plans forward? Now, I would already point out that we actually improved the Matterbridge in integration for this release. So upgrading yep, to Nextcloud 21 should help. Um, mm -hmm. But of course, keep improving it. Uh, yeah, there's, um, there's a lot of improvements happened there, especially the user interface was um, completely uh, redone and uh, it's a lot better now. So um, yeah, have a look at how it looks and, and works in Nextcloud 21. Yeah, um, and submit issues and help out, right? You can get involved. 
Um, two more questions because I think we should uh, draw an end to this. It's been uh, more than an hour now. Um, oh, wow, yeah, yeah, actually. Yeah, yeah, time goes quick when you're having fun. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, is there a forum that we can integrate into Nextcloud? I know there's talk, but not a forum. And yeah. a forum. Yeah, um, I, I, there is some Discord integration, I think, with Nextcloud, but not. Yeah, but the, the Discord integration is that you get like nice notifications and search and stuff inside Nextcloud about yeah. stuff that's happening in a forum. I don't know. I mean, a forum is by design like a public website. Where everybody can communicate together. And Nextcloud is by design private workspace. So I am not sure if we should turn Nextcloud into a forum. I'm not sure. Yeah, um, I, I agree. I mean, there are elements that are public, which another question actually touches on about CMS Pico, if that will work in Nextcloud 21. Mm -hmm. um, because that's, of course, one of these apps that gives you. Well, the ability to create a public page and not exactly yeah. a forum, but you know. Uh, yeah, that's... but that's like, yeah, the Pico CMS is really cool. So if you want to have some data, I don't know, maybe maybe you work in a university and you're doing some research and you want to publish some papers or some other information, then the Pico CMS stuff is really cool. But this will never, never become a tool where you really want to run your real website on. I mean, this is right. Next, Nextcloud will not become a forum, and Nextcloud will not become WordPress. Just, just, <laughs> just exactly. Not, the uh, Discourse is a very good forum. Use it. Discourse and is WordPress Discord is a great, is a great WordPress. <laughs> yeah, and there are other CMS systems for that, and yeah. I, I don't think that's the mission of Nextcloud. Right, because there's now somebody asking uh, Do you have plans for an official wiki in Nextcloud? Um, yeah, wiki, maybe. But like like an internal like knowledge based things, yeah, sure. And maybe someone is interested in, in contributing with that. There also there's some pieces in place actually. Yes. So the next lot text, our markdown editor, you can link to other documents. You can link from one document to another. So it is already a little bit like a wiki. And if someone wants to help to improve that, um, I think this is an interesting idea. Yeah, let's absolutely. See, um, let's see what what people are doing there in the future. Absolutely, yes, that is, that's already... Uh, but again, it should be yeah. then like an internal knowledge-based thing. We also, we also not recreating Wikipedia, yeah. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah, we already talked about it, but somebody asks about the progress of Kylona on Nextcloud. Well, that's what we just announced, right, last week. Um, last week, Monday, the uh, private healthcare data management app. Um, there will be more news on them because they're, of course, making very fast progress and implementing more features. Um, and after the call for testing, I think we want to do, you know, help them announce well, what their next step is. Uh, so, so that's coming soon. Um, if you don't mind, um, I mean, there are many more questions and, and we'd love to answer. But, um, you know, it's been almost an hour and a half. Um, so I'd like to end it. I want to thank everybody. Uh, for their attention, for bearing with me as my first in my first streaming experience. Sorry for the keyboard clacking and everything else. Um, we'll do better next time, I promise. I also promise it will be a next time because I think it's wonderful to have an opportunity to talk to all of you, answer questions. Um, because as as I see now, there's <laughs> there's so many more questions that we would love to answer. Um, but yeah, um, let's just do this the next time. Um, thank yeah, you. Yeah, and if you, other, if, if you have other questions, maybe just the forum is the nice uh, um, place to ask for our questions. Absolutely, absolutely. And of course, always on social media, you can ask us, and we try to answer that as well. Um, yeah. yeah, then thank you, everyone. Uh, we really look forward to hearing your feedback about Nexa 21, and what you think about it, uh, whether it does what, well, you hoped it would do and everything else and we'd love to see what you will do with it i'm sure it's gonna be glorious have a wonderful day everyone take care bye bye